Hey everyone, let's wrap up July. I actually uploaded videos in July. Well, not many, but we talked about the idea of getting that one thing to feel better. For me, it was catching up and you shared some of ideas or some things that you have this feeling for when you think like, if I just get this done, or if I just get this, then I feel better. And we all know it doesn't work. So thank you very much for the discussion there. I also uploaded a goals update to check in looking at my goals for Q2 and making new goals for Q3. And I also thank you for sharing your goals with me, how you're doing and if things are going well or not. Thank you all for that. Now let's head straight into the books because I managed to read 10 things, sort of. We'll start with physical books. I finished and uploaded a review for If I Have Your Face. This is a novel following four women in Seoul and we get alternating chapters with alternating perspectives. They are all connected, they are all living in the same house, they have some past together or are just randomly connected through the house. We get four characters, young women, trying to make a living in Seoul, and we get a lot about the Korean society, beauty standards, the cultural system or class system that exists, and the struggles these working women have. It's fascinating. I love the writing style. There's nothing much happening according to plot, but there's a lot happening on commentary, social commentary, and character. We get to see these people live and it's fascinating. I loved it. The other physical book I finished was Pizza Girl. And this is a book I picked up on a whim without realizing that it's been talked about on booktube a while ago and, and I had meant to read it all the time. So that was a bonus. The cover worked much better for me than the other cover that everyone talked about in the past. Anyways, going into the book. This book is very short and it follows a young woman, 18 year old, pregnant, as a delivery girl and struggling with life and the situation in general. She lives with her mother and her boyfriend in a house. They are very doting on her and it's getting on her nerves. We also learn a lot about her deceased father who died mm, maybe a year ago or so and learn a lot about her relationship with him and the effect that his being him had on her. Her father was basically a drunk. And we see her getting attached to an older woman who moved to the area and feels very strange. And it's fascinating. I loved following this for the character development, the attachment and obsession the pizza girl gets with the older woman, the older woman trying to make a living and finding her way and being frustrated and really not happy in the place where she is. At least it sounds like that to the pizza girl. Because we only get things from her point of view, so we don't know what other people really think. There's a little bit of snippets from other perspectives, but mostly it's what she thinks and how she experiences life and her relationships. I highly enjoyed it. It was a very fast, captivating read. Let's move on to ebooks, which were a little bit less successful. I picked up The Haunting of Tram Car 015 again, and I put it down before, but I thought maybe I'll try it again because the author keeps getting talked about and everybody loves their writing. Everybody loves their stories, especially those stories about Jin and Cairo and the magic system there. I honestly have to say, I now that I finished the story, I don't really remember much about it. And I once again realized that the author's writing is not for me. I don't know what it is. It's not that it's bad writing. It's just not working for me. I don't enjoy reading the stories. The story itself, the characters, the magic, the djinn and everything that was going on, I'm sort of interested. But because of the writing, it seems like behind a wall I can't get through. So that's it for me. I'm not going to read anything more by the author. Then I picked up Cold Enough for Snow because everybody seems to love it. And I'm just meh about it. The story is of a daughter and going to Japan with her mother traveling and them mostly not communicating. I felt that there was a lot that the daughter wished of her mother, but the mother couldn't deliver. And I think 
because everything is from the perspective of the daughter, that probably the mother is also in a situation where she wished something else from her daughter, but the daughter couldn't deliver. So they get along, but they lack topics of same interests. So it feels like they don't live in the same world, they don't like the same things, and try to manage to travel together. And it kind of feels awkward, but nothing happens. Nothing progresses. We get a lot of flashbacks of stories from the daughter from the past where she tries to fit in with other people and feels awkward around and is always struggling to be comfortable with herself. But I'm not sure. It was rather boring. And I don't know why it was there and why everybody loves it. The rest of the books I finished were on audio. And the theme might be memoirs again. I listened to Why Be Happy When You Could Be Normal. And I had never read anything by the author before and I quite liked it. It was very well narrated, it was very captivating and gave you an insight into a time of life that I don't have access to because it was the author growing up in the 60s in England and the parents or rather the adoptive parents being, I don't know, poor, is that the word, working class. Um, quite forgetful on the details. It was very entertaining, which sounds bad for a horrible relationship with your mother to tell, talk about, but I thought it was well done. It was well narrated. It was fascinating to see the thoughts the author had about her life, about her upbringing and her relationship with her mother and the things going on in her life and how it affected her in her character. Highly recommend that especially the audiobook. Another memoir I listened to was Managing Expectations and I didn't have any expectations on this one. It was mostly Mini Driver telling stories of her life, which I didn't know. I don't know much about her life. She narrated it herself. It was very entertaining. It was very easy to listen to. It didn't have major impact life lessons that you could take away from it, but it was snippets of her life, the way she saw them and experienced them and told them, and I enjoyed it. It was very entertaining. Probably won't remember much of it, but that doesn't matter. The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness is part memoir and part historical fiction, historical novel. I'm, I'm not quite sure where to put this, but the author is telling us about her life in night school between 16 and 19 I think and the experience of working in a factory and being a factory girl going to school and all of that around the soul upbringing or the soul spring in 1980 that happened around that time that she was that age and living in Seoul and experiencing that with her brothers and cousins and life around that but also while looking a little bit at the historical background it's more about her life and parallelly, her life in 1995 or 1994, when she is writing the book or writing the story of her past and why she's writing it, why she hasn't talked about it before and the effect it has on her and why she's struggling with things. It was very fascinating. It was very interesting. It was about a time and a place that I have no idea about. I didn't know there was an uprising and everything that happened. It was fascinating to read about the night school and the factory girls and all the things going on with unionization and the opportunities that were given with factory girls going to school, the system there. It was very interesting and I enjoyed the writing. The audiobook was also well done. The last audiobook I finished was not a memoir, it was fiction. It was Light from Uncommon Stars and I did not know what to expect going into this. Everyone on booktube read it loves it. So it was like, mm, why not give it a try? And it was so much fun. It's about a young girl running away from home with a violin and trying to find a place. And about a violin teacher selling souls to a demon. And the demon shows up as well. And we also have galactic travelers who took over a donut shop. As you can tell, it's a fun mix of stories. We get a lot of queer characters, a lot of non-white standard narrative perspectives, and I loved it. It was so much fun to listen to, to follow the stories of all these characters, how they interact, how they try to find their place in life. The young girl who ran away is a trans girl, and you get to hear a lot about her struggles, her personal identities, and 
the effect or the way life reacts to her or the world reacts to her and the struggles she has to deal with with her own identity and dealing with it in the surroundings and confines or just life in general. I'm lacking words to describe it, but it was so amazing. I can highly, highly recommend it. Everybody was right. This book is pure pleasure and fun and the audiobook was very enjoyable. Before we go, let's talk about my two current reads because as July is technically not over yet, I hope to finish them either today or tomorrow. So counting those two books for my July reads, one of which is Persuasion. This is a story of a young woman being persuaded by her family to cancel or end an engagement because they think the man is not worthy or on a lower level of class standard that they would like to have her marry into. And then nine years later, eight years later, somewhere there, they meet again and the struggles that the young woman has in dealing with seeing the love of her life, it sounds like, again, and him behaving and all the things that happen. What I noticed while rereading this is that the older I get and the more I reread Jane Austen, the more I understand her wit and humor and appreciate her writing. You may have heard me talk about Jane Austen before that I had classes on her, I did my intermediate exams on her, and I always hated reading her in university. But after uni, I started to get into Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion and the things I like about those books now I didn't see when I read them in my 20s. So that is something interesting I'm taking away from rereading Persuasion that there's a lot more that I'm getting out of this book than I did on my first read. Always good to reread books. The other book I want to mention is the Kaiju Preservation Society, which I'm listening to an audiobook. I have about two hours left, so I'm going to finish as well soon. And this is science fiction, sort of or not sort of, whatever you want to call it. The book starts in March 2020 with our main character just losing his job and switching to become a food delivery guy shortly before New York goes into lockdown. And in the course of delivering food, he meets an old acquaintance who offers him a job to do something well, basically lift things and that's what he does. It turns out it's in a different dimension and they're protecting or researching kaiju and that's what's going on. We're in the different world, we're experiencing adventures there, we're getting a lot of fun talk with a lot of interaction and it's enjoyable. It's fluffy, it's light, it makes me laugh so that's good and I always like John Scalzi and Will Wheaton writing it. Win-win. And that was my July. I'm quite happy with what I've read, even though a lot of the things were, uh, but I can take them off my list as never to touch those things again. So that's good. Let me know in comments how your July reading was. Did you read good books, bad books? Have you read any of the books I talked about? Let's talk July. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.